What's up guys? Welcome to Metal Vibes and this week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be ranking some modern death metal bands that I picked out and we'll be talking about how I feel about them. So real quick, my criteria for modern for this video means a band that was formed in 2010 or later and is not primarily the vehicle for a musician that's been in the scene for a long time. So for example, if you have a new project like uh, Strigoi featuring Gregory McIntosh from Paradise Lost, I'm not going to include that on this list because he's been making music since the late 80s and I want to focus on the newer blood for this tier list. So with that all being said, let's kick it off talking about Gate Creeper. So I've been listening to Gate Creeper for a while. I'm a big fan of their mix of death metal with some hardcore undertones and I really love their great sense of heft and power that they bring both on their albums and in their live shows. Chase Mason is also a monster of a vocalist. Not particularly intelligible, but he projects just so much force and power, and I think the other musicians in the band as well just really provide a sense of heft and force that you don't hear in a lot of other bands. To be fair, I will say they do have some great songs, but the riffing isn't always the most memorable. From their first album, I really like the songs Craving Flesh, Desperation, and Flamethrower, but other than those three songs, they're not really a super standout track from their first album. Their second album was also pretty good, but a little too slow for my taste, although the song Puncture Wounds, I Found pretty cool. I also thought that an unexpected reality EP was pretty neat. It kind of reminded me of that entombed core sound you heard in the early 2010s with bands like All Pigs Must Die. Although I will say I think those bands did that style a little bit better than Gate Creeper did, but it was still neat to hear them take that approach with an EP, and hopefully we'll hear them um, continue to use sounds like that on, on a new album. The thing about Gate Creeper for me is I feel like they have a lot of crossover appeal between death metal fans and hardcore fans. But I think as a band, they strike me as a group that just hasn't quite reached their full potential yet. I think we've yet to hear the best Gate Creeper album, and while I really do enjoy their stuff, I can't quite put them on S tier, so I will put them on A tier because of that. Great music, still fun to listen to, but not quite my favorite of the newer cadre of modern death metal bands. Alright, so let's talk about Skeletal Remains. This is an interesting band for me. I really like their strong influence from early pestilence and early death. I feel like you hear a lot of newer death metal bands that are influenced by like Incantation, uh, Morbid Angel, and uh, not so much now, but in the last decade or so, you heard a lot of bands heavily influenced by Entombed. So it's really cool to hear a band like Skeletal Remains that takes so much influence from Death and Pestilence. The performances these guys put out are also great. Really tight sound. I love the vocals in this group. It sounds like a more fierce Chuck Skuldiner. The production is also great, especially on the two most recent albums, which I think were both produced by Dan Swano. I will say, though, Skeletor Remains kind of has the same issue as Gate Creeper for me in that they don't always have the most memorable songs. There's good tracks, but I've listened to the title track from Devouring Mortality so many times, and unless I've literally just listened to it, I wouldn't be able to describe exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Still a really good band, but I think the lack of memorability in Skeletor Remains Definitely hinders my enjoyment a bit, and that's a little bit more of an issue for me with this band than it was for Gate Creeper. I'll put them on the B tier. Um, I think they got some good stuff. Yeah. All right, so next up we're going to be talking about Tomb Mold. So this is an interesting group. They're kind of incantation-y, but with a bit of a weirder vibe as well, with some Demolic influence coming in. When I listen to Tomb Mold, though, I just feel like what I'm hearing just feels like a step above a lot of what you hear today. They have this absolutely massive sound, but still bring a really dense atmosphere and some really great riffing too. I think they have a really keen ear for song craft as well, as well as how to construct a good album. Particularly Planetary Clairvoyance was just such a well put together release. I would say that record is probably actually one of the better death metal albums of the last few years. And considering how many times it's been repressed on vinyl at this point, it seems like pretty much every modern metal fan has a copy. <laughs> I don't really have a whole lot to say about Tomb Mold. I think they've continually gotten better. I do wish they would put something new out because Planetary Clairvoyance came out back in 2019. But still, to me, they're definitely one of the better bands of this generation of death metal. I'm going to put them on the S tier. All right, so next up we got 200 Stab Wounds. So these guys were kind of an overnight success. They got really big during COVID, but apparently without ever playing a live show. And I can kind of see why their brand of death metal is super groovy, but still remains very disgusting and very heavy at the same time. It definitely fits well with that kind of maggot stomp sound that's gotten popular in the last few years. In terms of how I feel about them, I really like their first EP. That release had a lot of songs that made their way onto my running playlist over the past couple years. But when their debut album, Slave to the Scalpel, came out, I really 
wasn't a big fan of it, and even on re-listen, I just haven't enjoyed it that much. I'm not even quite sure why, because a lot of the individual songs were good, and the album really isn't that long, so it's not like it overstays its welcome. But something about the way it comes together just feels like less than the sum of its parts, and it really just falls flat for me. I don't know if maybe I find their sound a little one-dimensional, or maybe I just don't find the way their songs are constructed is particularly interesting. But yes, 200 Stab Wounds just really doesn't do it for me. I am curious to see where they go from here, because I think they have a cool sound, and... It's not often you see a band become an overnight success like this, especially in death metal. For now, though, I'd have to say definitely not really my thing. Not a band I consider super interesting. I'm going to put them on the C tier. And sorry for any 200 Stab Wound fans out there, but this is just my opinion. So please let me know your opinion in the comments and uh, expect a lot of disagreement. <laughs> All right, so next up, I'm going to be ranking Outer Heaven. So I got into these guys back in early 2018 before their debut album even came out. Their early stuff kind of sounded like a mix of death metal, doom metal, and hardcore, which was a pretty neat combination. When their album came out, it ended up being a lot faster than I expected, and kind of started incorporating some weirder stuff, sort of like Tomb Mold with the Demolic influence. I would say their debut album, Realms of Eternal Decay, basically sounds like a faster and weirder version of Gatekeeper, in that it's basically death metal with a pretty decent hardcore influence going on. Again, Outer Heaven don't have the most memorable songs, but like Gatekeeper, there's something about their sound that's just so infectious. There's so much power and force to this band, and a pretty good atmosphere too. The other thing I'll say about Outer Heaven is their vocalist is an absolute monster. His death roar literally sounds so monstrous, it's almost borderline ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, really cool band, very direct, but also has that weird edge that gives it a little sense of mystery. I do hope we get a second album from them soon, because their first album came out way back in 2018. I saw them live about a year and a half ago when they were already playing new songs that they said would be on their second album, so hopefully we'll see that sometime this year. I think they're also playing the Hell in the Harbor Fest in Baltimore, um, so it'll be cool to see them. They put on a great show. Yeah, for me, these guys go on the A tier. Very promising young band. All right, so next up, we'll be talking about Frozen Soul. So similar to 200 Stab Wounds, Frozen Soul is another band that's been getting a lot of hype recently. Again, kind of an overnight success. They got signed to Century Media before they even put an album out. In terms of how I feel about them, I do like their kind of cool, icy aesthetic, which I find unique when it comes to death metal. But I have to say, musically, I'm not the biggest fan of Frozen Soul. Their sound kind of reminds me of like War Master era Bolt Thrower mixed with some of that hardcore influenced death metal like you heard from Gate Creeper and Outer Heaven. The combination sounds so good on paper, but I think the execution with Frozen Soul just doesn't quite stick the landing for me. I find their riffs just kind of generic and not very interesting, and their songs also just really don't do a whole lot for me. No real hooks, just kind of all heft without really anything to drag me in or to keep me engaged. They're a very heavy band, and I'm glad to see that such a young band, especially in the death metal genre, is finding so much success. But personally for me, when it comes to modern death metal, they're a C-tier act. And again, sorry to Frozen Soul fans out there. So next up, we'll be talking about Blood Incantation. So I love the theme these guys have. That alien, otherworldly vibe is just so cool to me. And I love the way it's integrated into their sound as well, where you have just really weird spacey passages combined with these twisted riffs. It all just makes for a very engrossing listen. Their songs are very adventurous and quite lengthy, but... I find a lot of them pretty engaging, especially on Hidden History of the Human Race. Starspawn, their first album, I found a little bit more meandering. Still really good, still love it. I own it on vinyl, and it's a great listen. But Hidden History of the Human Race, to me, is easily one of the best death metal albums of the past few years. To me, that's just excellent in terms of how they wrote the songs, in terms of how the album's constructed. Absolute masterpiece. I didn't listen to the ambient album Blood Incantation put out, because ambient music isn't really my thing, but I'm really excited to hear where they go from here. To me, when it comes to modern death metal, these guys are absolutely leading the pack. This is the one band where when I listen to it, I feel like I'm listening to something on the same level as those early bands like Morbid Angel, Demolic, bands like that. I think this is a band that's going to be remembered, and again, I'm really glad to see they've gotten so much success because I think they've earned it. Excellent group, one of the leaders of the modern death metal pack. They go on the S tier. All right, so lastly, we'll be talking about Sanguis Ugabog. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. So I'm pretty torn on how I feel about these guys. Their first EP was kind of neat and really epitomized that chuggy, maggot-stomp death metal style. Then their first album when it came out last year, Tortured Hole, I thought it was okay. It kind of deviated from the style of the EP and felt a little bit more like 
I guess, typical brutal death metal and kind of a modern take on it. So it wasn't necessarily generic, but I just didn't really think it was as interesting as I thought it would be. That said, though, their newest album, which just came out earlier this year, Homicidal Ecstasy, I thought was excellent. (laughs) That record just feels like sheer chugging force, just a total fist to the face for 45 minutes. And while on paper, it feels like it should be repetitive. For some reason, when I listen to that, I'm just constantly engaged. And I think there's enough cool riffs going on in that album that it doesn't get boring and it doesn't feel too repetitive or anything like that. Super heavy, super disgusting, super chuggy. Yeah, just a great overall release. Honestly, one of my favorite releases this year so far. Yeah, these guys are another really promising band. I think they're up there with Gate Creeper and Outer Heaven in my book in terms of the A tier of modern death metal. And again, really excited to see where they go from here. And that really goes for all these bands. I'm really excited to see what their legacy is going to be. And I think it's cool that there's so many newer bands out there doing old school style death metal, but kind of putting their own twist on it, either by incorporating more hardcore elements or some kind of weirder elements that you didn't necessarily hear a whole lot of in the old days. Anyway, guys, that'll do it for this list. I know there's a whole bunch of modern death metal bands that I did not talk about. I will probably be doing a part two of this, so please drop some bands in the comments that you'd like to see in the next version of this list. In the meantime, if you like this video, please drop me a like, please subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and as always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next week. Stay heavy.